So to start the day, we have to start with the biggest game on the schedule. For me, probably for you, that is number one Alabama at Texas on the 40 acres. And yes, Alabama survived this game 20 to 19, but there was so much that went on and the atmosphere was tremendous. I'm still in Austin, Texas, streaming to you live, talking you through this game. First thing that I think we got to take into account is that this is the first game of the season where we got to see the crowd become a factor. 105,000 plus people showed up to this game. That is a record for DKR Memorial Stadium, and it was outstanding from the jump. We got to see number one quarterbacks in high school going at it with each other. And off the top, one of my first questions is looking at this game and how it ended for Alabama and what Bryce Young needed to do to help them secure a victory is wonder allowed Alabama's best team in the country. Now, for me, you know that I made Georgia the number one team in the country according to my ranking last week. And spoilers, that's not looking to change because Alabama looked nothing like a number one team in the country to me, even as they're playing a Texas team that I gave a lot more credit than many other folks did. What was also really interesting for me is how this game changed once again with a Texas quarterback being knocked out of the game against Alabama. You'll know, 2010, January 7th, Colt McCoy gets knocked out of the game against Alabama for the national championship. They're leading 6-0 to the first quarter, and then Bama pours it on, scoring 24 in the second half. So one of my questions here was, what happens to Quinn Ewers when he took that hit, where it looked like he landed on his head, landed on his shoulder, turns out, he has a clavicle sprain, had one of those, broken my clavicle a couple of times. It's really difficult to rotate and throw the ball. So we had to see Hudson Card come into the game after Quinn Ewers was out there absolutely spinning it. 9 of 12 for 134 yards, threw a dime to Xavier Worthy that Xavier could not hold on to that probably goes for six, probably puts this game out of reach for Bama early. And then, of course, we had the missed field goal near the end of the first half that was a gimme. From Burt Auburn ruining an Auburn beats Bama headline for all of us. But one of the things that we learned from Texas is that Quinn Ewers is that dude. You heard me say this for the better part of two years now, especially for you OGs of the show. He is one of six players to achieve a perfect score according to the 247 Sports Composite. 1.000. The last quarterback to get that score also is a Texas legend. Vince Young scored that highly and eventually led the Texas Longhorns to the national championship and the last national championship that Texas has won. I wondered if Quinn Ewers finished this game rather than taking this hit, being knocked out, having to put a Hudson card in there. Does Alabama still win? I don't think so. I think Quinn Ewers' ability to throw the ball deep and show touch was on display early, but also when Hudson card was in the game, especially when he was healthy, he did not have the same accuracy down the field that we have seen from the dude that comes from South Lake Kara, the Dallas Fort Worth area, showing out. They really missed that from Quinn Ewers, and Hudson Carr was doing an admirable job coming into the game as a backup to keep Texas in the game and give them a lead. As a matter of fact, when Texas took the lead in this game, it was the first time that Texas had led Alabama since January 7, 2010, when they led Alabama 6-0 to at the end of that first quarter. So... What does it mean for quarterbacks in this particular game? As we've seen, again, Colt McCoy going back. Then Bryce Young not playing his best. we got to wait till the fourth quarter to see Bryce Young go over 100 yards passing and really do the Heisman thing, right? For me, I'm watching this game, and Bryce Young does not look good. He didn't look good against Auburn last year. He didn't look good against Texas A&M last year, but still won the Heisman Trophy because when push came to shove, Bryce Young was there to make a play. 20 yards scramble to get them into field goal range where Will Riker could knock it through the uprights to give Alabama the win. But I was thinking about this in the way that Bo Nix played at Auburn years ago when it seemed like for 59 minutes and 30 seconds, Bo Nix was nowhere to be seen and then came up with his own Houdini act to beat Oregon in that game. I think that this is very similar. We learned a lot about Texas in this game, but we also learned a lot about Alabama. And now we're going to get my favorite version of Alabama, which is Nick Saban being pissed off at the world. Mostly at his players, though, because they committed a record 15 penalties in this game, along with the crowd being involved 
you got three offsides from Will Anderson in this game. That is the best defender in all of college football who could not even get lined up correctly against a true freshman offensive tackle. And those offensive, uh, offensive linemen at Texas were absolutely playing their behinds off for most of this game, protecting those quarterbacks, giving them throwing lanes, and you saw the speed that they have on the outside for Texas. I thought it was really interesting that B. John Robinson was even more capable in this game than he was against Louisiana Monroe last year, right? He actually had more all-purpose yards against the number one team in the country than he did against the Warhawks. What I'm telling you is I think Quinn Ewers going out of this game really changed up just how we get to view this Texas team, what they're made of. And also, what are we going to do with Alabama now? Because we got to see Nick Saban do something I've never seen him do. And I would love to hear from you whether or not you've ever seen Nick Saban call two defensive timeouts in one half of football. To say nothing of calling a defensive timeout in one half of football. His teams are usually fundamentally sound on the defensive side, particularly on the back end because he is a defensive back himself. And it looked like if you lined up a tall receiver or tight end on Quincy McKinstry, Kool-Aid to his grandmama, he was not going to be happy. I got to see big wide receiver, big tight end after big wide receiver after big tight end go at McKinstry and absolutely moss that man. If he'd had a little bit more touch from Hudson Card, I think you can see some TDs there. Jatavion Sanders showing out once again. That's a guy that I thought could go both ways for Texas. Ends up playing that tight end position, mostly because there is no Jaleel Billingsley playing in this team yet. But when they get Jaleel Billingsley going alongside Jatavion Sanders and Xavier Worthy, go with Bijan Robinson eight yards deep, they're going to be a force. Hopefully Quinn Ewers is okay. We get back to him coming off of this, well, close loss, a loss that I thought was fascinating. Steve Sarkeesian said, we did not lose this game, right? And I'm going, I hear what you're saying, because you're a good football team, and you got to show that. Do we think less of Alabama? Yes. Should we think more of Texas? Also, yes. I was very impressed with what I saw on the 40 acres, and as a dude that has been the conductor, driving that locomotive that says Texas is back, you got to see what I see when we're talking about what this team is capable of. One of my other observations from this game that I think needs to be mentioned is just how much better the defense was for Texas in this game. This is a defense that gave up 450-plus yards of offense last year with Pete Kukowski in year one. Of course, they only win five games in 2021 and have that embarrassing loss to Kansas to finish the season, which means that we were robbed of a, Kansas victory for, uh, a transitive victory for Kansas over number one Alabama, which I would have been very much here for. But... Signing in Gary Patterson to be a special assistant to the head coach, I think was a genius move for Steve Sarkeesian that you got to see pay off right here in this game. You got to see Gary Patterson get with Pete Kukowski and give him the playbook he used to give these really high-powered offenses fits. As an Oklahoma fan, I can tell you, I was always terrified of Texas Christian because I knew Gary Patterson was going to have his defense ready to go. It was going to be a tight game. They weren't going to beat themselves. And most important, they were going to tackle. You got to see Texas players flying to the football, wrapping guys up around their knees and stacking them on the ground. I didn't see any of that last year. Between the scheme and their ability to run with those wide receivers and to really only get beat up by Jameer Gibbs and the one 80-yard-plus touchdown from Jace McClellan, I'm going to grade them out as a B here. DeMarvion Overshone did a really great job of leading this defense. Very impressed by what they were able to do in keeping their offense in this game, especially in the second half, as you know, the backup quarterback is out there and was out there on a bad plant foot, still trying to make it happen, and nearly did. One play goes the other way for Texas. You're talking about them winning this game. I mean, I was looking at this after we saw the controversial play where it looked to our eyes at first jump, Bryce Young had been sacked for a safety and what would I think have turned the game in Texas's favor. Turns out, in this play, not only was he not down, but the roughing the passer and the targeting call were negated. And it ended up being an incomplete pass where Alabama had new life and was able to save themselves two points there. You couple that with three points that were guineas and miss from Auburn, and you can see how Texas could have won this game if only they can convert. It's an old adage, but it's one that sticks. You got to score six. You can't just keep scoring field goals against a team like Alabama. Even when they're playing badly, they have these dudes capable of really getting themselves out of these bad situations. You saw it with Bryce Young once again. 
who played bad football until the final series of the day where he turned into Superman, and you understand why he is the reigning Heisman Trophy winner. One of the last things I think that we need to mention in here is just that Will Anderson did not have the kind of impact in this game that I thought he was going to have. I don't know just yet whether I can attribute that to Kyle Flood and Kelvin Banks Jr., who's a true freshman at left tackle, or to Will Anderson, who's just having a bad day in front of a bevy of NFL scouts. But I got to tell you, I'm a little bit worried about Alabama going into the rest of this season. And I think that if you are a Bama fan, you should feel worried too. But my goodness, you got to feel good about coming away with a 20-19 to 19 win on a day when top 10, top 25 teams are being bodied. Thank you for watching the number one college football show. Please remember to subscribe to the channel and like this video so that you don't miss any of the best college football coverage in America.